Hey everybody, uh, it's Jamie. We're going to start on part 15 of our tutorial series. I already had did this, but uh, the recording had some errors and messed up, so I'm going to do it all over again. Yay! So, um, what we're going to do is start creating animation. So we're going to get the animation class going. We're going to reset our assets. We're going to use a new asset. We're going to use the, a Link character from uh, Zelda. And then um, we are going to uh, you know, reset the player uh, class as well so that uh, it will then take in animations. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a new file. Oh, and I want to let everybody know I'm just using Notepad++. I upgraded to Windows 10 and uh, I don't have WebStorm on this yet. I did a full factory reset. So uh, I'm just going to use Notepad++ for this tutorial here. I may go back to WebStorm. I'm actually liking Notepad++ again. So um, we might just end up finishing out the tutorial on this. All right. So I'm going to create a new file and it's going to be called animation.js. And in here we're going to define our class. This is only going to take in class. All right, so we're going to have var animation. So we'll set up the animation declaration. Animation. And it's going to just equal to class.extend. And we're going to have our constructor. And it's going to take in a object called frame, uh, frames. Actually, I believe it'll be an array. Um, yeah, I believe it'll be an array of frames, which will be an array of objects, <laughs> essentially. So I'll explain that in a moment. So the first thing is we're going to set frames equal to frames. So we're going to say set the uh, instance uh, variable of frames. So each one will have its own frames, each instance of an animation. So we're going to set index equal to zero. This will be what the current index uh, or current frame is. Then we're going to say this dot last time is equal to date dot now. So we're going to create kind of a, a tick function, which will be similar to our game loop. And you'll see why as we go. This dot timers, again, very similar to the game loop. Uh, and then we'll have a this dot speed, and this will be the animation speed or du duration. Now we don't have to declare it up here, but we will. All right. So the next thing we'll have is that tick. So this tick function, we don't need to pass in delta time or anything for this. It'll literally uh, be the simplest function, really. So it's going to do the same kind of thing that we did in our game loop. We're saying this dot timer is plus equal to the difference from right now to the last time that we ran the function. So when we first, the first time we come to it, which is in the constructor, we set last time equal to the current time. And then uh, once we run that tick function, it's going to update uh, the last time right here to the current time as well in that state dot now. So we're going to get the difference from the last time we ran the tick to this current time and reset the last time variable equal to uh, the current time here. So now we're going to uh, see if the timer is greater than or equal to the speed of our uh, current animation. And oops, and I think I'm just going to put it like this. Uh, right. And what what we're going to do in here, we're going to increase this dot index plus plus. So we're just basically saying, hey, if it's been if it's been the allotted amount of time for the frame, let's move on to the next frame. We're going to have to reset timer equal to zero so we can start over again. And then we're going to check to see if this dot index is greater than or equal to this dot frames dot length. So we're going to figure out if it's on the last frame. And if it is the last frame, we're gonna set index back equal oops, index back equal to zero so that we start over at the beginning of the animation. Simple enough. That's uh very much like the game loop. We're just making sure that this only switches to the next frame when it's been long enough. 
uh, been, you know, this set amount of time. So the next thing that we have, uh, we're going to do is create another function in here, and this will be what we actually call uh, to get the current frame, and it's going to be called just that: get current frame. And oops, and it is a function that's going to return the current frame. So. Uh, All right, so within this, this is supposed to be within our object, so I must have just went a little too far. There we go. Push this here. This closes our object. There we go. So in this, we're going to set this.speed equal to this.frames, and then of the index that we're currently at, this.index, dot speed. So what I'm going to allow is each frame is also going to come with an attribute of speed and that will let us know how long uh, we're supposed to last on that frame. So now we can return this dot frames at this dot index so at what the current index is dot frame. So now we're getting instead of that speed attribute we're going to grab the actual frame data which is just the cropped asset. So once we've got this done, that's literally the whole animation class. Just return animation so that we actually get the object uh, when we include the class. So now let me go into the assets. We're going to include animation and pass it in as animation so that we have access to it. And one thing we'll also do is go all the way back out to our app.js and include that in here. So we'll say animation and it's app slash classes slash gfx slash animation. All right. Now in here, I've already removed uh, the, I've removed the player asset. We're going to be using a new player. So we're going to just create a new asset instead of the old one. So first thing though, we're going to create a new function that we can use. Um, and that's going to be add animation. And this function is going to allow us to add an animation uh, to an asset. So what we do is we're passing in the name of the animation so that we ha we can call the animation by name or request it by name and it takes in an animation that we create. So we're going to create an animation using our animation class and then pass that into the asset um, so that we can reference all of the animations. So you'll see how we, that works right when we start with the player. So now what this just does is it's going to set this, I, I, I added this in there. It's this dot animation. It's just a blank object that we put into the constructor, and uh, it's this dot animations. So we're going to um, we're going to create an attribute with the name that was passed in, and then set it equal to the animation. So now when we refer to this dot animations, or let's say player asset dot animations dot walk left it will pull whatever animation we passed in for the walk left animation simple enough easy as pie the next thing we're going to do is start um, building our frames so um these will be the frames of our animations so let me do that we'll build frames so this is going to be done a in a way that could definitely be done with other sprites, especially if you create your own. I suggest creating it like this if possible, because it makes things a lot faster. We don't have to write out a bunch of frames. We can actually use what I'm going to use as a for loop to add in all the frames. So I'm going to oops, come up above here and we're going to uh, create player asset. And first, before we build the frames, let's create that player asset. So we're going to say player equal to a new assets and its name is player then it is going to use a resource in our resource folder and textures and it's going to be called link.png that's where uh, that's the name of the um, file that 
we're using now. And each of the frames are going to be 120 by 130. So now that I've had that, I've created the asset that we can refer to by name and the picture that is um, specified with that asset. So now that we can that we've did that, let's start building our frames. So a frame is just an object that that uh, contains the frame data as well as well as the speed or the duration of that. Um, I'm going to leave it named speed, though it really kind of means duration. So we're going to create the uh, frame duration or frame speed, you can call it. I'm going to set that to 30 milliseconds. The next thing that I'm going to do is uh, we're going to have walk right frames and uh, we're going to set that equal to a blink array. We're going to have walk left frames. That's also equal to a blink array. Uh, walk up frames. Walk down frames. And then we're going to also um, have a few other variables. So these are just going to be an array of frames that we will be pushing into our animation when we create each of these animations, okay? Um, and you'll see that it, that's when we actually use our animation class. So the other thing that I'm going to have is um, our walk, walk right row, and this will be equal to row 7. So what we have, and I'll show you this, um, in our, let me just see if I can go right to it. Uh, slash tile game. It's going to be slash or tutorial slash tile game slash res. Let's just go here. Oops, I think I didn't start up my server. There we go. Come on. All right, let's see if now that the server is loaded, that's the right folder. All right, and we're going to go to textures and then link. So this is the link picture. So this is our, our the sprite sheet. So we can see that we have link here. So what I did is what, by saying walk right row, I'm picking the row that our walking right animation is in, which is right down here, which just so happens to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's actually going to be row 7 because um, we're starting with 0 as the top. So we're going to set row, um, walk right row to 7, walk left row is equal to 5, and you'll see on the, date, on the sheet that's why, uh, that's what the row is for that. And walk up row is 6, and walk down row is 4. So in here you can tell all those rows, these ones right here, all have 10 frames, and they are um, row 4, 5, 6, and 7. So that's all I did, and that'll be helpful in the for loop. So that's all we need before the for loop. So we can run our for loop now. 4 of our i is equal to 0, i is less than 10, and i++. plus plus within here we're going to say uh, walk right frames or sorry w r frames dot push we're going to push in our 
frame. So again, our frame has an object that, or a property called frame, which is going to be the uh, the uh, sheet, so we're, the crop section. So the actual asset player dot sheet, and we're using player because we've set it up here as an asset dot sheet dot crop. We're going to tell it what position to crop. So we're going to use the player dot width, which is that width we put in of 120. We're going to set that times i, and that means that it will move over to the next frame um, using the width that we've specified. Um, you know, as we go through the for loop, creating a new frame and pushing it into our right uh, walk right frames array. Um, so then we will use the player dot height times our walk right row. So this is saying where at on the Y does our animation, uh, our walk right animation start. And we know that each one of these is 130, 130 pixels. So if we multiply it by the row, we actually get directly to row 7 down here, right at the very top right, or top left for the first frame. And then we iterate through the array, boom, 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 adding uh, each frame in very quickly. So then the next thing that we need after we've did that is the width and the height, which we can actually just use player.width and player.height. All right. So the next thing that the frame will need is the speed. And for these, we'll just use frame speed. So now that that's done, we've actually created a, we've pushed in uh, all of the frames needed for the walk right animation. So we'll do the same thing for walk left. And the only difference for walk left is going to be that we don't use the walk right row, but we use the walk left row. So that being said, we can just do the same things that we just did again for all of them. So this is not walk right, this is going to be walk up, and this will be walk down. I mean, we could even go as far as to create a new for loop and start it at frame 4, but eh, we just we want to be able to actually push these in correctly, so we'll leave it just as it is. All right, so now that that's done, that's all that needs to be done inside the for loop. Um, we do need to change these to walk left, walk up, and walk down. From here we're going to create one animation by hand and that's good because it'll show you how an animation will be made by hand as well. It's very much the same thing. So instead of creating a blank array we're going to uh, actually create the the uh, idle frames inside of the array. So idle frames is what we're going to call it. It's going to be equal to an array and in that array we will create the frame. So the first frame is frame player dot sheet dot crop and we're going to crop at zero zero so the first the first frame of the whole thing and we're using player width and player dot height that will be um, that will be the player's width and height at um, position zero zero so the very top frame and then we'll set speed and for this one we're going to set it to frame speed we're going to multiply it by 80 because I want this frame to last a lot longer so I'm going to push these up onto one line just because that's not too long and we're going to have three frames the only difference is 
we're going to use oh, not player height that'll still be at zero player dot width times uh oh, we'll just use player dot width and then player dot width times two so what that does is it starts over the far left uh, frame the next frame is one width over and the next one is two width uh, two times the width over um, the only difference with these ones is they will be quick at the frames duration so what this is is this is just an idle animation which really just consists of a long pause and a blink with two frames for a blink now that we've created the animation frames we will create animations and this is where we're using our animation class we're just using these uh, frames that we created to push into animation so we'll say player dot add animation and that's going to, now we get to name our animation so this will be walk right and it will have a animation in it we'll say walk or walk right frames so you can see that's what we're doing we're pushing in the frame into that and do the same for the rest of them walk left walk left frames walk up we'll use the walk up frames in the animation down down and then finally we have idle and that will take our idle frames there we are so we've successfully created animations and added them to the player asset so now we have access to the animation uh, within that asset <clears throat> now the other thing that we need to do is actually come into our uh, entity class into our player class and let's create uh, the animation so I've removed the render function and we're going to redo the render function so uh, with the new it didn't need to be all deleted but I just did it anyway to start from scratch so let's get our assets we're going to say this dot assets is equal to assets dot get assets player so we're going to get the player asset and set it to the asset for our player so now we will uh, first off we need to tick these animations that we've created so um, to do that we'll come in under the handler and we will just say this dot assets dot animations animations dot and then we can say walk right and we can run the tick function within that and we can do that with all of them ticking them so we'll say walk right walk left walk up and walk down now we could use a loop and just loop through all of our animations in running the tick function on each of those um, I may do that in the future but for now we're just going to do it like this we also have one more and that is our idle so from this point we are ticking all of our animations the next thing we can do is render it so we can say uh, actually we have to create one more function before we can render it so I'm going to come down to the bottom here and I already had the comment there and we're going to say get current animation frame and this is going to return uh, whichever animation we need so in this case I'm actually going to jump ahead and kind of just do the uh, the finalized version of this um, 
in how that works is we're going to change the animation um, and get the current frame based on which direction we're moving. So we can say this dot x move is less than zero. Now we can actually just say return this dot assets dot animation dot walk left because we'll be moving left dot get current frame. So this is how that's going to kind of work. It's just like this. Um, so if I come back up, and I'm just going to leave it like that for now. If I come back up here into the render, I can do g dot my draw image. You can say this dot assets dot animations dot walk right dot get current animation frame or get current frame. All right. We can actually just use that for now. So we can say this dot x minus camera dot get game camera dot oops and you already have this I, I don't know why I deleted it um, actually let me just grab it yeah I didn't need to delete that let's see what we get when we just throw in this. So everything else is the same. There we are. So we're just going to render the animation, uh, render it at the animation walk right. So. Um, let's see what we have here, what we need to change, fix, so. So, player line 40 and assets line 59, so I have a bit of error, so player on line 40, player line 40, I just remove some stuff and then assets line 59 assets line 59 speed is equal to frame speed we don't need these closing semicolons here all right Let's see what happens now up. Still says player line 40. Is it not? Yeah, that's right. Let me double check. Tutorials to how game. problem here still and line 40 line 40 should be taken care of frame speed oh assets In player line 40, we need a comma. I, forgot, I must have removed that. There we go. So we've got our little character here. And he's just moving right. So we need to make it, again, use that get current animation frame down here. So we will say else if 
this.x move is greater than zero, we'll return, let's just copy this, and we will return walk right, and else if this dot y move is greater than, I'll say less than zero, we will return All right, we'll return the walk up and else if it is greater than zero, we will do walk down because remember, uh, down will be a positive movement on the Y. Else if, and we won't put an else if, we'll just put an else. and we will return idle. So now up here, we can just say this dot get current animation frame and let's see what happens now. Oh, player is not defined because we have a error on line 63 we don't need that I don't know why that was there all right so 30 if we look 30 is super crazy fast so Let's go back in here and go all the way up to our, uh, in our assets. We'll go up to frame duration and set frame duration to, let's say, let's say one, 100 milliseconds. That might be slow. Let's see what happens. So even at 100, his, his blinking is really fast. But let's see his other animations. Walking left, walking right. Those work. Walk down, walk up. So there we go. Now he's got animations to him. And you can see you can add many, many uh, animations. So we can even do, like, if we had a diagonal or whatever, we could just check to see if he's moving, you know, if he's X move is less than zero and his Y move is less than zero, then we can use a diagonal. So we can just continue to add animations and, and all of that. So they're still a little fast. Um, maybe if we took his idle animation and we change this from 80 to let's say 300. He might idle and not look like he's going crazy and spazzing at that point. There we go. Oh, it's still kind of fast. His animations could be slowed down a little bit as well. So I'll take this up to a thousand and we'll take frame speed up to 150. We should get much slower blink. I have a feeling that that blinking is some something off about it. Maybe his animations are... don't think they're moving in speeding up, but something definitely does not seem right about his 
uh, blinking animation, it seems to be speeding up. If I look in my animation class, next plus plus. That looks like it should be working fine, but his blink doesn't seem to be lasting nearly long enough. Although, actually, if it was... Let's like a look and see if he blinks still kind of fast. That looks like it might actually be speeding up over time. Yeah, that's definitely something going on with his idle animation. And Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. It kind of surprised me because at this point, that's 10,000. That should be like 10 seconds or more. It should be more than that. It should be uh, 15 seconds or something. So I don't know why he is moving so quickly. His frames seem to be speeding up. Um, I'll take a look and see what could be causing that. The player tick function, it only, if we go up, it ticks each one. So it should just be ticking them the same amount. Um, I'll take a look at it and uh, see what I can figure out. All right, so it looks like everything else in life, last timer was not set. And I was trying to set last timer, and that doesn't exist. So it's last time. That should be fine. I'm going to go back to the asset, and I'm going to change it to times, let's say, five, let's say 600. Because if it's at one, let's do 100. And if we multiply that by 600, we get 6,000. Uh, that's a little long. Let's try this. Let's see what we get. Oh, and before I do that, uh, we'll make sure that I don't have console log. Yeah, I was doing some testing, logging. All right, so we should have him blink in five seconds. Let's make sure. Okay, so it might be little long right now. Let's take it back to times 80. And set this to like 75, because it's a little delayed now. Now that we've got it working, it's kind of fast. Or slow, I mean. There's a blink. It doesn't seem to be blinking any faster. There we go. And we move right. And that's consistent right there. All right. So there we go. There's our animations. They're working. They look nice. Um, so that is all cool. We still collide. So that's working. 
Uh, the only thing is, is I think our collision box will need to be changed. So if I come up to our collision box, oh no, I think our collision box is good. I've set the bounds to the X is 16, the Y is 32, width is 25, and height is 32. So that is uh, the bounds that I've set for him. Um, we could, yeah, I think that'll be fine for, for this. So there we are. He's running around. He's colliding. He's got some animations. Uh, so I will be posting this up on the Git, and you should be able to follow along. Thank you, guys.